Villagers and local media in Indonesia say a 25-year-old man was swallowed whole by a python snake. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at claims of giant snakes eating people. And obviously as a zoologist with an extreme fascination in snakes, I'd love to simply say it never happens. But as we're about to find out, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. So. Let's get started with number one on the list, the green anaconda. Can anacondas, well I know theoretically obviously they can eat people, yeah. but like have anacondas eaten people? Yeah, they are one of the species of snake that have like fully consumed human beings <laughs> in the Amazon rainforest. So Wait, like, are, are the yeah. anacondas, they bite you or they wrap around you and squeeze you? Both, yeah, yeah, they bite you and then wrap around you and then like take you underwater to like have you like, you know, like drown. <laughs> <laughs> there we had the social media version of the, yeah. Uh, of the facts as it were um but no that's not true there's no verified case of an anaconda ever actually swallowing someone it could have happened perhaps you know at some point in history but there's no verified case of an anaconda eating someone So there you had the Hollywood version of anacondas from that classic, if very, very cheesy movie where anacondas just grab people and swallow them in seconds. The reality though is very far from that. The anaconda struck and latched onto his head after he covered himself in pig's blood. It wrapped itself around his body and squeezed with terrifying force. The stunt promised he would be eaten alive, but as his arm began to crack under the pressure, he yelled for his team to rescue him. Viewers were furious, expecting the snake to swallow him whole. But instead, his helpers pulled the snake off when it had swallowed only the top of his head. So that was referring to the documentary Eaten Alive, which apparently everyone in the world had seen, aside from me. I completely missed that, I've no idea where I was, and thankfully my subscribers told me about it. And honestly, it's, it's interesting and completely terrible. Imagine everybody being mad at you for not getting eaten by a snake. That's exactly what happened to Paul Rosalie, who made the widely criticized nature doc Eaten Alive, that featured Paul traveling into the Amazon rainforest in search of the world's longest anaconda to feed himself to while wearing a custom-built snake-proof suit. He did this to bring attention to the destruction of the Amazon, but animal rights groups condemned the show for animal cruelty. The doc premiered to over four 4 million viewers, but anyone hoping to see somebody get eaten alive was left unsatisfied. Most of the program was spent hunting for the anaconda, but the search left them at a dead end and they made do with an already captive snake. Paul suits up, covers himself in pig's blood, even though green anacondas apparently don't eat pigs, and force feeds himself to the snake. The anaconda goes at it for a while and gets their mouth around Paul's head, but an hour into the meal, Paul's arm was about to break and he taps out. Under no circumstance could you ever say that doing something like that is going to help conservation. It will raise awareness for your brand, but it won't help anacondas. It won't help the rainforest. It reinforces the idea that the rainforest is a scary place, whereas, frankly, a lot of the time most of the animals stay hidden. And it also reinforces this idea that anacondas eat people, and there's no proof of that. On the whole, really, it's just a, an overwhelmingly harmful thing if you do like these animals and you do appreciate them for the you know the beautiful wild creatures that they are I and mean, as she strikes at me i just just grab her head right before it hits my face so i have this snake i get my, another hand on so once you have control of the head they shouldn't be able to bite you so i'm holding on to the snake now here's the thing that i didn't anticipate she wraps a coil around my hands suddenly my forearms are tied together all of a sudden the next coil comes around over my neck and so now my, my shoulders and my arms are out of my control. The snake owns them. Snake starts constricting. My collarbones were inches from touching. I felt everything about to break. There's a couple of things in there, again, that kind of get alarm bells ringing for me and, and make me ask questions about the seriousness of the whole enterprise. Uh, first of all, I mean, if a snake strikes at you, you might be able to deflect the strike, but actually grabbing it behind the head as it strikes would be many, many times more difficult. That takes extreme reflexes and timing. But also the thing of always saying that your bones are about to break. I've never had that either. I've broken about seven bones and they just break. <laughs> it's one It's one action. You fall off something or you jump off something if you're stupid like me. And they just snap. Anyway, overall, the anaconda, I've got to say, it has a particular way of hunting. It likes to be 
submerged, basically. It likes to grab stuff at the water's edge. It's not in this set of circumstances where it's regularly hunting people. It seems to have abundant prey, and there seems to be a different snake, which we'll get to in a minute, that does occasionally eat people, and it's a completely different animal with different behavior. So that does tell you a lot right away. Now for number two on the list, this one gets accused a lot, and that is the African rock python. The juvenile gazelle on the group's periphery. In a matter of seconds, the youngster is entrapped in the python's coils. Incredibly, she can accommodate prey three times the size of her skull. She gets to work making a meal of the gazelle. Using hunt that was an African rock python hunting. It's interesting that it went for a juvenile gazelle because an adult gazelle I'm sure could reach possibly 70 kilos in weight. I'm not sure what that is in pounds, maybe 150 or something. So that would be a big meal and that would be approaching, you know, human sized meal. But the snake didn't, it went for a juvenile. How long do you reckon that is? 12 feet? Tony's good at that. What size do you think that is? What here? What size do you think that is? 12 feet? Uh, I think longer than that because the tail's way back there. That was another very, very large meal in that snake, obviously. As they're saying, it looks like it could be a 12 foot plus individual. They are capable of eating very large meals. But again, it just doesn't seem to happen with humans. They don't seem to be eating people. By the way, if you do enjoy this video, please do subscribe. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers still. Uh, it might take a while, but I'm sure we can do it. The predator suddenly strikes, snatching the boy. Terrified the monster will come after them, the others run and hide in the trees. Just pause that for a second there. This is a story that was widely circulated uh, a few years back about a young boy being constricted and eaten by an African rock python in South Africa. And I'll do a bit more of a comment on this in a second, but let's just watch the rest quickly. Canine unit officers arrive and begin searching the area. Snake expert Byron Zimmerman is also called to the scene. The search comes up empty. They also never find the elusive killer. This case has been widely reported as fact, and it often gets repeated on the internet as fact. I've had people tell me it's a fact. But the snake was never found. The child was never found, any remains or anything. Not that you would find it unless you find the snake. But also no child was reported as missing. No one was looking for a child. And to me, it really just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why anyone would make up a story like that, but sometimes kids do make up stories, sometimes adults make up stories. You know, there's plenty of cases of people making up stories about ghosts, UFOs, and, and other stuff that are just for their own amusement, really. Uh, I don't know that that is what happened. What I do know is that the Southern African rock python, the species in South Africa, is a bit smaller than the Central African rock python, and it does, like I say, it does eat big meals, especially for its size, but eating a human, that's just that's a bit too big. So for me, I'm going to debunk this one. I'm going to say it didn't happen. I don't believe it's true. Now on to number three on our list. The famous captive snakes that people don't keep responsibly that end up eating their family members. Uh, needless to say, you can, you can tell I'm already a bit skeptical of this one. Now, let's return to the story of little Zach Shaw, who last week was tragically crushed and eaten by his pet python. It's the moment that every parent with a 20-foot-long snake fears most. I must have been such a shock. Yeah. I mean, you never think that a python's going to bring your family anything but joy. What an excellent quote. That clearly is, you know, it's not real. That's, that's clearly made up. That's a hoax or a skit or something. But why they went to so much effort, I really don't know. In any case, I couldn't find any records of this actually being true. Yes, there have been people who have been attacked by pythons in captivity, particularly children. It has resulted in casualties, but it's very uncommon. I mean, very, very, very uncommon. The number of deaths from dogs is much higher. Even though I love dogs as well, I'm not criticizing dogs as a, as a pet species. But, you know, even in proportion to the number of snakes in captivity, 
the number of accidents from constrictors is very, very low. It really comes down to a secure enclosure and making sure the snake can never escape. Now on to number four on the list. This is a snake that does occasionally actually eat people, the reticulated python. Villagers and local media in Indonesia say a 25-year-old man was swallowed whole by a python snake. The man went to work on his crop Sunday and never returned. That's when others went to look for him. What they found disturbing. So you might see this going around today. A 54-year-old woman in Indonesia was apparently eaten by a large reticulated python. But according to Tom Crutchfield, which I found this article, um, and I tend to believe this guy, uh, it, it might happen more often than I realized. He's making a good point there that reporting isn't always 100% accurate. There could be cases of people being eaten by reticulated pythons in parts of Indonesia, for example, that don't get reported. So... When I do this video, for example, I am going on the facts I have available. There's always a possibility, just like with snake bite, that there are unreported cases. Now, a 45-year-old Indonesian woman named Farida was found dead inside of a 16-foot-long python in Kalampong village, southwest Sulawesi. She went missing on Thursday night, prompting a search, and villagers discovered the snake with a large belly and cut it open, revealing Farida inside. This marks at least the fifth such incident in Indonesia since 2017. Reti Reticulated pythons are what I call a dynamic species. They're not like the anaconda that likes to wallow in, in water all the time. They like water, but they also like to cover land, they like to climb, they hunt in various locations. And what you have in Sulawesi is an area where there's semi-wild habitat, semi-rural habitat, there's people keeping goats, chickens, even pigs in some areas that attract the snakes, and it also happens to be the place on Earth where the reticulated pythons tend to grow the largest. So you've got this really unique, special set of circumstances that come together to make people attending to their animals or their garden in the sort of dawn and dusk times makes people vulnerable to attack from reticulated pythons. <laughs> That's a widely circulated video that has been verified by the Indonesian authorities showing a woman who was sadly swallowed by a reticulated python and there they are actually cutting her out of its belly uh, and it does it does appear to be real this does appear to be something that happens occasionally that snake was solid muscle he hardly resisted as i pulled him out of the water but he was still an incredible weight we haven't got the head i've got the tail which is good oh he's eating something look at this it's got something in here about the size of a monkey or a duck or something this is a big snake man and look at him pull. Oh, this is the problem now. He's even, he's even wet and I can't get a good grip on him. Here we go. That's about the uh, level of activity you usually see from them during the day. But when they're out at night, they're a different animal. When they're hungry, they're a completely different animal. Like I say, they're dynamic. They can move quickly. They can grab someone. Um, but just because they can, it doesn't mean they regularly do. It's not common. In a nutshell, overall, I've found good half a dozen documented cases of people being eaten by reticulated pythons since 2017. This species does appear to occasionally eat people, but again, I'd like to stress that it's under a certain set of circumstances where their habitat meets human, agricultural, or semi-urban areas. People in Kuala Lumpur, for example, living on the 10th floor in a, in a nice apartment block, they're not being eaten by reticulated pythons. It tends to be in these more rural areas that the accidents occur. And this is an important factor to think about, that there's a multitude of different things that come together and coalesce to create a dangerous situation. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting, and I hope you'll come back next week for another one. Thank you very much.